we are very happy to have today Satoshi Morai from Waseda University. And he's going to talk about cohomology rings of regular nilpotent Hatzenberg varieties and hyperplane arrangements. And it's so great that he agreed to give a talk from Japan where it's only eight in the morning. So please go ahead. Okay, thank you for the introduction. And uh, I'm very happy to give a talk in University of Washington from Japan. And maybe I should also point out that it's a very exciting experience that I'm supposed to be gi giving a talk in October 14, but I'm actually in Japan, we already October 15. So <laughs> it's a kind of a very interesting experience. And uh, I forgot for what to do it in the pre seminar, but I actually upload the slide in my homepage and I already send it to the chat. So if you want to get the slide, then you can please, please go to the uh, URL in the chat. And uh, today I want to talk about the cohomology ring of the Negra near potent Hessenberg varieties and hyperplane arrangement. And I'm now maybe I sorry that I should apologize that this is a bit old work with uh, the Abe Horiguchi Master and Sato. It's, I proved this result in 2000, uh, no, 2016, so it's almost four years ago. But I am hoping that this topic is still a very interesting topic. And so I decided to give a talk on this, talk, this title. And it, actually, I also maybe say that. This is a very, it's one of the, my, uh, one of my favorite joint work because, so this is a joint work with three group which are come from the different, uh, different sides. So I mean, so, so I'm a commutative algebra, right? And the uh, Takuro Abe is actually an expert of hyperplane arrangement and Horiguchi Masasato is an expert of the Hessenberg variety. So we, and we too are algebraic, but these three people are not algebraic, so they are algebraic topologists. And for some reason, we have a joint work with these three groups. So it's, it's a very exciting experience for me. And okay, anyway, let's start. And uh, this talk is very much related to the classical result about the cohomology link of the flag variety. So let me first uh, recall the what our result about the cohomology of the Prague variety. So let FLCM to be the Prague variety. So it is a uh, it is a set of the six set of the flags of uh, the n-dimensional vector space. And Prague means that the sequence of the vector space uh, of the shape B zero B one B two blah 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 B M and each bi has a vector space of dimension i. And this set is known to be an algebraic variety, which is called the Prag variety. And there's a classical result about the cohomology ring of this Prag variety. And so let s be a polynomial ring. And let ek be an elementary symmetric function of degree k. And the, there's a classical result of Borel, which says that the cohomology ring of this flag variety is isomorphic to the, what the people call the co-invariant algebra, which is a quotient of a polynomial ring by an elementary symmetric function. And, and I also, maybe I also should say that when I consider the cohomology ring, I always consider the rational questions by some technical reason. And, this is a very classical result, and, but it's still very uh, hot topic in algebraic combinatorics, I believe. And from, I'm, as I said, I'm commutative algebra, and from commutative algebra viewpoints, this formulation, uh, this formula is very nice because this formula says that the, this ring is the ring which, what we call the complete intersections. The section is uh, the quotient ring of by the ideal, which is generated by a regular sequence. And if we 
have a complete section, the one nice thing is that we can actually compute the Hilbert series of this ring. Sorry, as uh, if you have, a, I think if you have a question, I I actually prefer to ask directly because I, I don't think I can read the chat immediately. But okay, let's try for what complex size. Okay, I was just wondering. I, I I figured like I didn't want to interrupt it in case that this question doesn't end up being important. But I was wondering what complex are we getting that homology from? Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. It's a, <laughs> the other person actually <laughs> already answered. But yeah, it's just a single homology. Oh, I, I'm not familiar with that. And anyway, so <laughs> from the ring, ring theoretic perspective, and you can actually compute the Hilbert series, which is actually in this case a Poincaré series. So from this formula, you can you can see that the Poincaré series of the black variety is a product of this uh, polynomial. So Poincaré series completely factors in this case. And uh, maybe uh, I just should mention that if you consider Poincaré series, then we just put the degree of the, in, in this case, you should put the degree of the variables to two because the old cohomology of the black variety vanishes. And I think this is a classical result, but recently there are several works which try to generalize these formulas to the variety, which what the people call the regular near potent Hessenberg varieties. And uh, this is a main topic which I want to discuss today. So anyway, so let me then explain what are the Hessenberg varieties. So, okay, so to define this, uh, let me first define the Hessenberg function. So let bracket n to be the set of integers one to n, then a Hessenbach function is a function from bracket n to bracket n, satisfying these two conditions. The first condition says that hi must be larger than or equal to i. And the second condition says that the, this function, uh, the sequence h1 to hn must be non decreasing So here's a simple example. So, if we consider the Hessenbach function, we actually consider that it is a sequence of integers. And if we consider it is a sequence of integers, then 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4, these are the Hessenbach function because it, uh, it satisfies hi is larger than equal to i, and these are the non decreasing function sequence. But, you, but 2, 2, 3, 3, and 3, 2, 4, 4, one, these are not Hessenbach function. Because in the, in, in the first case, we have three in the last element, but the condi first condition says that the fourth entry must be larger than or equal to four. So this doesn't satisfy condition one. And this sequence doesn't satisfy condition two because it is not, it is not a non-decreasing sequence. And <clears throat> it is sometimes convenient to visualize the Hessenbach function by pictures, like follows. So if we have a Hessenbach function, two, three, four, four, I sometimes visualize it in this over four table by putting, by first take two, two squares from the first column and three squares in the first, uh, second column and four squares from the third column and so on. And this visualization is sometimes very useful to consider Hessenbach function. And okay, this is the definition of the Hessenbach function, and and then the Hessenbach variety is defined as follows. So let X be n, any n by n matrix. Then the Hessenbach uh, Hessenbach variety is respect to the matrix X and the Hessenbach function H is actually is a sub variety of the flag variety, which consists of consisting of flags which satisfies that XBI is contained in BHI for all I. I'll give an example later. And, and you can define the Hessenberg variety for any matrix, but 
I, I'm actually only interested in the case of the matrix is N, which is equal to the matrix which has just one Jordan product, so, and whose diagonal is equal to zero. Okay, and it's just this Jordan block. And the Hessenberg variety with respect to this matrix and the Hessenberg function H is called the regular nilpotent Hessenberg variety. And because this element is called the regular uh, nilpotent element. And uh, this is the main target of this talk. But anyway, I probably I should give an example, in a simple example for the Hessenberg variety. So I first want to mention that Hessenberg variety contains a flag variety. Because if H is a function, N, 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 then the definition of the Hessenberg variety says that this is a sub variety uh, of the flag variety. And satisfying con sub the condition that n bi is contained in bhi. But if h is if h is equal to n n n n, then the condition is actually that this is equal to b n, and b n is actually the whole space. And then this means that uh, n times b n is contained in c n is a trivial condition. So it gives no condition. So this is just equal to the flag variety. And uh, maybe this is a trivial example, so I probably should give an example which is not a flag variety. So the simplest case is probably h is equal to one two, and in this case, this is a we need to consider two by two matrix. So Hessenberg uh, variety is in this case uh, it's a sequence of vector space zero b one c two, and the condition is that this matrix times B1 is contained in B1. And B1 is a one dimensional vector space. And you can easily uh, check that the uh, vector space satisfying this condition uh, is, I mean, the only vector space satisfying this condition is actually the vector space generated by one zero. So we only have one flag, so zero, in the vector space one zero and C two. So it has only one flag, so this is just actually just a point in this case. So and in general, uh, for given a Hessenbach function, so if Hessenbach function becomes larger, then the variety becomes larger. And the largest case is a flag variety. And the smallest case becomes a point. And but we have we have some interesting things in the middle. Okay, this is it. Okay, then uh, to let me again talk about the purpose of this talk. And in the introduction, I already talked that the cohomology ring of rock variety is given by this simple formula. And its Poincaré series is also have a very nice factorization formula. And these results are generalized to the regular nilpotent Hessenberg varieties. So some formula is complicated, but for example, Summers and Timosko proved that the Poincaré series of the Hessenberg variety, a regular nilpotent Hessenberg variety is given by this formula. So I don't want to explain it the uh, detail, but so, so in the flag case, we have this factorization formula. And this, this formula of the regular nilpotent Hessenberg bar just change some indices in here, and then, but still you, get, you still get a nice factorization formula. And these four people actually uh, generalize uh, this first statement. So they actually uh, find the explicit presentation of the cohomology ring. So they prove that so, uh, it is actually a polynomial in modulo sum, some polynomials. And these polynomials are defined by uh, this formula. Um, the, fo the formula is a bit complicated, but the important thing is that they actually compute the ex explicit presentation of the cohomology rings. 
And uh, these are the known results. And what I want to talk today is that, so I introduced these two results about the regular new potent Hessenbach varieties. But we can, act, we can actually explain the, these results uh, by using the theory of the free hyperplane arrangement. And uh, I, want, I want to talk how these results are related to the theory of the hyperplane arrangements. So that's the aim of the, my talk today. Maybe I, maybe I speak too <laughs> quickly, but are, are there any questions at the moment? Yeah, actually, I have a question. Um, yeah. So you could make this definition of this variety for any function. So like why single out yes. Essenberg functions? What happens to use a different one? Yes, you can. Yes, that's true. You can define, but then some people are starting to uh, consider such a condition. But at this moment, so, I mean, these varieties do not have a, do not always have a nice properties comparing the Hessenbach function. Okay, sure. Uh, so for example, do these varieties have affine pavings if your function is not Hessenberg or? No, they don't have a, a, a affine paving in general. Okay. 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 Then let's continue. So at this moment, I told nothing about the hyperplane arrangement. So next, let me explain uh, how these things are related to hyperplane arrangements. And these of the, these Hessenbach varieties are related to the special hyperplane arrangement, which is called the ideal arrangements. And so let, next, let me explain what are the ideal arrangements. And just to recall that the hyperplane arrangement is just a finite correction of the hyperplanes in, in the n-dimensional Euclidean space. I actually only consider the case Rn. And uh, uh, just to simplify the notation, I want to consider that hyperplane arrangement is just actually a set of linear forms by identifying each hyperplane with its defining linear form. So, so when I write the hyperplane arrangement, so I write something like hyperplane arrangement is a set of x minus x2, x minus x3, and x2 minus x3. This is a bit unusual, but I just want to do this to simplify the notation. And, and this is a three-dimensional hyperplane arrangement, and, it's, uh, and I actually cannot write a three-dimensional picture, but and this hyperplane arrangement, uh, you, you can write a projection, and so this hyperplane arrangement uh, looks like something like this in the two-dimensional picture. And so next, let me explain the ideal arrangement. So uh, let phi plus to be the braid arrangement. Braid arrangement is uh, an arrangement which is defined by uh, uh, consumes hyperplanes x i minus x j and i and j uh, is in between one and n. And this, I consider that this is an arrangement, but of course, you may consider that this P plus is a set of the positive roots in of type A root system. And in particular, if you regard this as a positive root of the type A root system, you can define the partial order on this set in a natural way. So if you, <coughs> so more precisely, you can define a partial order on these elements by x i minus I, I, x j is larger than or equal to x i prime minus x j prime if and only if i is less than or equal to i prime and j is larger than or equal to j prime. Um, sorry, by yeah. x i minus x j, are, are, you, can, are, are you thinking of the polynomial or the hyperplane x i minus x j equals zero? Uh, I'm identifying these two, but uh, so I, I should say I basically consider that these are the polynomials. Uh -huh. And uh, here's an uh, example of the uh, Hasse diagram, the phi plus. So uh, if we, uh, this is a case when n is equal to four, then we have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, 
uh, hypo, uh, five, uh, six linear forms and one x1 minus x2 and x2 minus x3 and x3 minus x4 smallest element and x1 minus x4 is the largest element. And then, so idea arrangement is a sub arrangement of the braid arrangement. So sub arrangement is just a subset of the braid arrangement. And the ideal arrangement is a sub arrangement of the braid arrangement, so which is actually a lower ideal with this to this partial load. So the lower ideal means that if some element is contains the arrangement, and if we have some element which is smaller than the first element, then this element must be contained in the arrangement. So here's an example. So if we take these four hyperplanes, then uh, this is a lower idea in this poor set. So this is an idea arrangement. But if we, for example, take these three hyperplanes, and then this is not an ideal arrangement because uh, this x1 minus x3 is contained in the arrangement, but x1 minus x2 is not contained in the arrangement. So the ideal arrangement is the arrangement which is closed uh, by taking the going down conditions. Okay, uh, this is just, actually just an example which I already told. So if we consider this idea, then uh, the corresponding uh, arrangement is these, the arrangement consists of these four hyperplanes. Okay, and uh, this idea arrangement is actually related to the Hessenberg functions. And actually, there's a one to one correspondence between the Hessenberg function and ideal arrangements. So, the correspondence is as follows first, take the Hessenberg function H, and then uh, you take the hyperplane arrangement AH, which is consisting of the hyperplanes Xi minus Xj, and such that J is smaller than HI. And uh, this from this, you can you can assign each Hessenberg function to the ideal arrangements. And, but anyway, so I think it is better to under, uh, uh, it is better to have an example for to understand this correspondence. So let me give an example. So the, this correspondence is given as follows. So first, consider the function two four 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 four. Then, as I said, you may identify this function as this picture of the first take two, two squares and four squares, four squares, four squares. And then, uh, to obtain this arrangement, we do the following. So first put x, x minus x2 here, and then x1 minus x3 here, and then x1 minus x4 here, and x2 minus x4 here, uh, three and x2 minus x4 here, and x3 minus x4 here. So I just write down the, this polynomials, there are the diagonals. And then, then this arrangement, so this arrangement just obtained by taking the hyperplanes in this red part. So if h is two four 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 four, then a h is x one minus x two x two minus x three x two minus x four x minus three minus x. In this way, you can get the ideal arrangement because. So if you just look at this part, if you look at this part, this part is actually can be identified with the uh, positive phi plus. So this is a positive uh, P plus, so which I wrote before, but if you rotate, uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, if you rotate this part to here, then you get exactly this poset. And the relation is somewhat, something like this for something like this, and you can get the poset structure in this picture, 
and just taking and taking the intersection of this picture and this upper plane, you you uh, you can really see that this gives an ideal arrangement. So, and I just explained that the Hessenberg function from the Hessenberg function we can define the ideal arrangement. But you can also do the converse. So given any ideal arrangement, you can recover some Hessenberg function. And this gives actually gives a bijection between the Hessenberg function and the ideal arrangements. And, and indeed, this ideal arrangement has a, a, a ideal arrangement and the Hessenberg, uh, regular need for the Hessenberg variety has a very nice relations. And there are several results on this topic, but I just want to introduce, explain one nice relation, which is related to my talk. So this is about the factorization of the characteristic polynomial and Poincaré polynomial. So let chi AT be the characteristic polynomial of the arrangements. I'm sorry, I don't have the time to explain the characteristic polynomial in detail, but I just like the definition. So, it is a sum of the mu x times t to the dimension. And here, x runs over all the elements of the intersection faucet, and mu x is a Mabius function. And, the, and this characteristic polynomial is one of the major combinatorial invariant of the uh, hyperplane arrangement. And I'm actually, uh, in this talk, we are only interested in the ideal arrangement. And for the ideal arrangement, you can actually compute the characteristic polynomial in a very simple way. Because ideal arrangement is actually a special case of the arrangement which people call the graphic arrangement. So these arrangements are defined by graph, sim uh, by simple graphs. And for the graphic arrangement, characteristic polynomial is equal to the chromatic function, a uh, chromatic polynomial. And uh, chromatic polynomial of these graphs can be easily computed. And you can compute that this is actually product of d minus hk minus hk. Then I want to record the result which I already introduced in the beginning. So as I told, Summers and Timosko proved that the Poincaré series of the regular and important Hessenberg varieties given by this factorization formula. So product of one plus t squared plus rho by t squared times hk minus k. So what I want to say is that, so you have factorization of two polynomials. So one polynomial is a characteristic polynomial. And the other polynomial is a Poincaré polynomial. The factorization is similar, uh, different, but somewhat similar. And perhaps, maybe, perhaps I should give an example. So let me explain more about this in the, this in the next slide. So we have two factorizations. So characteristic polynomial factors in this way. And the Poincaré polynomial also factors in this way. And if you want to see the actual example, here's an example. So in this case, it's a, case A is three, 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 three. And in this case, characteristic polynomial is T minus two times T minus one times T minus two. And the Poincaré polynomial is T to the zero. So this, this is, of course, this is equal to one, but I, I just want to write the zero in here. So I use T to the zero. But anyway, so this Poincaré polynomial is T to the zero times T to the zero plus T, and uh, T to the zero plus T plus T square. And so we have two factorization which looks different, but we, for some reason, we get the same number, 0, 1, 2, and 0, 1, 2. And uh, the, the first motivation of our research is to understand why we get these two factorizations uh, with the same numbers. Of course, we have, these are different factorization, but some similar factorization. And my course, Abe, actually have a very nice idea about it. And he told that these two factorization formula actually appears in the theory of the free hyperplane arrangements. 
And this is what I want to talk, uh, uh, and this one is what I want to explain um, in the next slide. So anyway, so I, I'm sorry, I introduced too many notations, but next I want to explain what is a free arrangement and what, how the free arrangement are related to these polynomials. So, okay, let me discuss the free arrangement. So, let A be a central hyperplane arrangement. Central means that every hyperplane contains an origin. And let S be a polynomial ring. And let del S to be the free S module whose basis are del 1 to del n. So these are the partial derivatives. So this is a rank, uh, rank n free S module. And then uh, let D A be the sub module of del S consisting of theta uh, such that the theta if theta times alpha k, alpha k is a linear form in the arrangement, theta times alpha k is contained in the ideal generated by alpha k. And this sub uh, this module is called the logarithmic derivation module or the logarithmic vector field of the arrangement A. And uh, I understand that it's you need, some, you need some time to figure out what is this module and actually uh, it, it takes a long time for me to understand wha what are these modules. But anyway, so let me just give one example to help your understanding. But if you cannot understand the definition, I, I, I think you don't really need to care about it. Even if you don't understand the definition, you can understand our result. So anyway, so let's consider the case A is equal to x1 minus x2, x1 minus x3, x2 minus x3. And then the logarithmic derivation module of A is in this case generated by these three elements. So the first element is del1 plus del2 plus del3. And the second element is x2 plus x3, del1 plus x1 plus x3, del2 plus x1 plus x2, del3, and so on. And it's not so uh, easy to understand. It's not easy to see that these modules are equal. But just to help you understanding, if you want to see that, that these elements are contained in the derivation module, uh, what you have to do is the following. So I, I actually only want to explain that, uh, how to check this element is contained in the module. So if you want to see that this element is contained in the module, what you have to do is to apply this element to each hyperplane in the arrangement. And for example, if you apply this element to the hyperplane x1 minus x2, then you get x2, x3 minus x1, x3. Because x2, x3, del1, if you apply x3, to x3 del 1 to x1 minus x2, then you get x2, x3. And x1, x3 del 2 times x1 minus x2 is minus x1, x3. And if you apply x1, x2 del 3 to x1 minus x2, then you get 0. So you get x2, x3 minus x1, x3. And this is actually x3 times x2 minus x1. So this is uh, divisible by x1 minus x2. So this contains in the idea generated by x1 minus x2. So as I said, it's, I, I think it's not easy to understand what the, the, the meaning of the, the, this definition, but as I said, it's not, uh, I mean, it's not important to understand this definition. So I just go to the next slide. And okay, now let me explain what is a free arrangement. A free arrangement is an arrangement such that this logarithmic derivation module is a free S module. And this is also not very trivial, but for example, in the, my previous example, the, this module is generated by these three elements, but there are no relations between these three elements. So this is a free arrangement. And uh, this is also a general fact that if a is a free arrangement is an n-dimensional space. 
then this logarithmic derivation module is actually generated by n elements. And the sequence of degrees of these n elements are called the exponents of the arrangement. So for example, in this picture, in this example, this is a free module, and we have three generators. And the, the first generator has degree zero, and the second generator has degree one, and the last gen generator has degree two. So we say that this arrangement is free with exponents zero, one, two. And uh, maybe I, assume, I should say that I'm assuming that I'm considering that the partial derivation doesn't have a degree. And, uh, and there's a very famous result in hyperplane arrangement, which is called the Terraud factorization. So Terraud factorization says that if A is a free arrangement with exponent d1 to dn, then its characteristic polynomial actually factors and this is given by t minus d1 times t minus d2 times t minus d a. And this is a this is a very famous result in hyperplane arrangement theory, and in particular free arrangement theory. And it it gives a very strong restriction to the characteristic polynomial. And this is a, some, this is very nice because it's, uh, freeness is an algebraic condition, but the fact, this factorization is somewhat combinatorial condition. So the algeb algebraic gives some nice combina combinatorial uh, give now combinatorial results to characteristic polynomial. And uh, this fact uh, Terraud's factorization is the kind of a famous result in arrangement theory. But I also need to introduce less famous result. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I, I'm, oh, no, no, I'm sorry. I forgot to explain that. So I'm for the case of the ideal arrangement, this is known to be a free arrangement and whose exponents are eight, hn minus n, probably h1 minus r. And, and this is, uh, I don't know who first knows, find this, but so, well, as I say, this arrangement is a special case of the graphic arrangement, and the, uh, there's a characterization of the freeness of the graphic arrangement. So the graphic arrangement is free if and only if the underlying graph is a quarter graph. So from, from this characterization, you can easily find that this is a free arrangement. And I'm sorry, so, and I want to introduce one more result in the free arrangement theory. It, and this, uh, this uh, the previous theorem is very famous, but this result is uh, a little bit minor. And so, okay, consider the S linear map, phi, which is a map from del S to L, S. So the map sends, go, sends <laughs> map is the form, as follows. So consider the element of del S, which is G1 del 1 plus G, G2 del 2 plus del 2 plus del G and del N. And the map send this element to g1 x1 plus g2 x2 plus gn xn. So I'm saying that this map actually changes the partial derivation to the variables. The, this is a kind of a crazy map, but the definition is actually simple. So just change the right to xi. And then, and this, this statement essentially appears in the paper of the Solomon Terrao. And is, they actually prove a bit general result, but if we consider the special case of the free arrangement, if A is a free arrangement with exponent d1 to dn and gen with generators f1 to fn, and the theory, it says that the, this, pi, poly, this polynomial pi f1 and pi fn, this is an S regular sequence. So I don't want to explain what is that. S regular sequence, just a typical commutative algebra. But for, from this result, we have a consequence. So we can actually uh, get the Hilbert series of the quotient ring of, uh, of S by these polynomials. So, so uh, maybe I should say that this DA is a S free S module and phi is a map of the S, it, phi is a S linear map. So if we send this phi, and uh, this, if we send d8 by phi, then this is an, this is an ideal generated by phi f1 to phi fn. And anyway, 
The fact that this is a S regular sequence tells us that if we consider Hilbert series, then it factors in this way. So we have some, so the theorem says that we have some nice factorization formula when we have a free arrangement. So I think I introduced too many things, so let me summarize. So as I said, the ideal arrangement is known to be a free arrangement with exponents this. And then Terrell's factorization says that the characteristic polynomial factors in this way. And on the other hand, the previous result of Solomon and Terrell says that the Hewitt series of the quotient ring of by this ideal, again factors in this way. And uh, just because that I uh, the result which I introduced um, before is that result of Sor Summers and Timotsko is that the, if we consider the Poincare series of the regular and important Hessian variety, then we have this formula of the factorization. And uh, of course, so Poincare series is a Hilbert series of the cohomology ring of the regular and important, uh, cohomology uh, ring of the, hmm? I'm sorry, Poincare series is a Hilbert series of the cohomology ring. So from this, from this result, you can see that we have a ring S modulo phi E A H, and this, the Hilbert function is given by this formula. And on the other hand, uh, we have a cohomology ring of the and important Hessenberg variety whose Hilbert series is given by this formula. And from this formula, you can see that these are the same, uh, these have the same values. So we have two rings which have the same Hilbert functions. And the natural question is that what is the relation between these rings? And what we proved is that these rings are actually isomorphic. So let H be a Hessenberg function, then the cohomology ring of the regular and important Hessenberg variety is actually equal to the S module uh, phi of the logarithmic derivation module. And um, probably I should say that in the case of the flag variety, this result is known. So, so because uh, if <laughs> in the case of the flag variety, the left hand side is uh, uh, by the result of whatever it's a uh, S modulo the elementary symmetric function. And on the other hand, the right, for the right hand side, it is a, there's a result of Kyoji Saito, which proves that, so this idea, this idea is generated by the elementary symmetric function. So in the fact case, this is known. And what we did is we, we can extend this to the regular and important Hessian variety. Anyway, probably I should give an example. So. Um, for example, consider the case H is equal to 2, 3, 3. Then the arrangement is something like this, x1 minus x2 and x2 minus x3. And you can consider the logarithmic derivation module. And if you compute, then these are generated by these three elements. And the, what I'm saying in this claim is that you can uh, to compute the relation of the cohomology Cohomology rings by just replacing the partial derivative to xk. So the theorem says that if you consider the cohomology ring of this layer and important Hessian bar variety, then it is equal to the del1 plus del, uh, the, then it is uh, the quotient of the polynomial ring by these three relations, and the relations are just obtained by uh, replacing partial derivative with variables. So d1 plus d2 plus d3 becomes x1 plus x2, x3. And x1 minus x2, d1 becomes x1 minus x2, x1. And x1 minus x3, d1 plus x2 minus x3, d2 becomes this last polynomial. So, and, uh, and probably I sh should say that I'm, we are not completely understand why we get such a nice relation. So, the, I mean, so, so what I'm saying is that we have, a, we, of, we of course proved this re, uh, result, but our proof is actually uh, very algebraic. So 
maybe we have a high sky for five minutes, right? So maybe I just took an hours of proof very quickly. So, so actually, I'll prove something that goes like this. And I just need one notation, which you can find the undergraded textbook. So for an ideal in the polynomial ring and some polynomial f, so let i colon f to be the ideal quotient. Ideal quotient means that it is a polynomial such that f times c is contained in i. This is, this is called the ideal quotient. And then what we give is the following. Let beta h to be the set of all hyperplanes which is not contained in the ideal arrangement. And, let, and let's write the cohomology ring of flat varieties by S modulo j. So of course, j is just an idea generated by elementary symmetric function. And then we first prove that the phi of the logarithmic derivation module is actually the phi of the braid arrangement colon beta h. And then we prove that the cohomology ring of the regular Newport Hessenberg variety is again obtained by the flag from the flag variety by taking the colon of the beta h. So what we essentially do is that we compute these two things from the flag case, and, and we just check that both of the ideal is given by the colon ideal. And then, because we know that in the flag case, everything is the same, so we can see that these two links are isomorphic. It's just a, some algebraic calculation, but in, in some sense, we do not really understand why we do not answer the geometric reason why these rings have the uh, isomorphic. And uh, I will soon finish my talk with just one remark. So, and in this talk, I only talk about, uh, I actually only talk about the Hessenberg variety of type A, because it's easier to understand and easy to explain, actually it's easy to explain, <laughs> I should say. But this thing about varieties and ideal arrangements can be defined for all D types. So you can also define these things like P, C, D, and exceptional types. And I, I would say that you, the result which I introduced was for all D types, not just type A. And I also should want to mention that the generators of, so if we want to, you want to apply this our result, you must compute the, uh, gen generators of the logarithm derivation module. But these generators of these modules are actually already computed. So you, if you want to study the co this cohomology ring, so you don't really need to uh, compute, compute them again. So you, you just use the known result then, you, and you don't really need to understand the, what are the logarithm derivation module. You, we already have a formula of the cohomology ring. And uh, perhaps I should stop here. So thank you for your attention. Thank you so much for a wonderful talk. Any additional questions for Satoshi? Uh, yeah, so this product uh, Hilbert, this product formula for the Hilbert series, I mean, you could get that if mm -hmm. the variety was like a sequence, uh, like an iterated sequence of fiber bundles or something. Do you know if there's any, can you realize it in that way? Mm, um, I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm not so familiar with this kind of geometric thing, so I don't think I can okay. answer. These things, are, not smooth, these things right? are smooth, are singular, so. They're singular, yeah, that was my yes. yeah, concern. Okay. Sarah, go ahead. You had some question, right? Yeah, well, um, I was curious if you try to find a Schubert variety that has the same Poincaré polynomial. It would be a smooth one, but would there be some connections to the Hesper variety? In it? Yes. Uh... It's actually discussed this problem with Takro Abe, but at least they are not, the two links have the same Hilbert function, but they are not isomorphic. And uh, I'm not so sure. I hope, I'm hoping that there's some relation, but I don't 
couldn't find it. Well, I'm not even sure it. they exist, right? I'm not sure that if you take any product like this, you can always find a sugar, fr a sugar variety that has that polynomial even. Like, so it's, there's an existence problem too. Mm, yeah. Brandon, go ahead. Uh, yeah, so uh, in kind of subsequent work, uh, you, you pose this problem of finding a, a Schubert type basis, right, for this quotient by using the Timoshka paving. Um, I mean, computationally, you know, the, the Schubert polynomials themselves, like if you take the appropriate codes that have the leading terms in the basis, seem to descend to a basis. Is there any hope that a, you can prove that thing is a basis algebraically, and B, that it actually corresponds geometrically to um, the Timoshka paving. Uh, Brendan, uh, you, you, you should wait a few months, and me and Martha and Eric are working on the geometric question. Okay. Good <laughs> <laughs> <Okay. laughs> and, and, and maybe another question. Um, so so the, this like presentation you get for the cohomology ring coming from the free bases of the ideal, these ideal arrangements. I mean, it, it was kind of the classical Borel presentation for the full flag variety, but it looked like that FIJ presentation um, in the other example you gave. So, so it's, it's sort of a, a different presentation from either in general, right? Yes, right. So actually, so, and uh, the presentation of FIJ is more or less close to the powers, not the elemental symmetry. Mm -hmm. And you also need some change of the, and, and you also need some base change mm -hmm. to obtain it. Mm -hmm. Any more questions? I, I had one more question. Um, so at the beginning, you made this um, this reduction to a single matrix N that just had this single block, right? It was just the matrix with zeros on the diagonals and one above. Mm -hmm. How how is that used, or, or maybe can you help give some intuition for why why was that the correct matrix to look at, and and why are all these results sort of dependent on that specific matrix? So I should say it's hard to explain for me, but so my my understanding is that the important case is uh, the case if you have a Jordan decomposition, then the all all the Jordan block has a different eigenvalues. And the regularly important case is actually the simplest case. We have just one Jordan block. And the, I, I, I like the eigenvalues with zero, but I, eigenvalues are not so important. You can use any eigenvalue. So and it is one of the simple, the regular and important case is one of the very simplest case in this setting. Okay. And, and also, um, when you when you got to computing the characteristic polynomial of the of the braid arrangement in this case, right? It's a miracle that a characteristic polynomial of an arrangement factors so nicely. But you know, are, are there other? I was trying to think of if there's some matroid way of generalizing this instead of just looking at the arrangements. Are there nice matroids that where the characteristic polynomial would factor uh, so nicely, and then you could get some cohomology ring whose char whose Poincaré series is carrying the same information over? Is that just impossible uh, to hope for? I should say that I don't know, but as I said, so you can do the same thing to the free, you can always do the same thing to the free arrangement, but you, you really need the coordinate of the arrangement, and I'm not so sure if you can define the freeness of the matroids. I see. Okay, thank you. Any additional questions? Satoshi, I put a link to the paper about iterated fiber bundles there in the chat. Oh, 
if you haven't seen it, um, Gasharov and Reiner did a nice job. They summarized previous work by other people too, but it's a good place to start. Yes, thank you. Any additional questions or comments? Then let's thank Satoshi again. Thank you for coming.